praise the living God forever. Uh, uh, it's a very, very sad day for us here at Harvest. Those of you that tuned in late, the Lord rebuke you. Um, we uh, heard the news this morning that our dear beloved Pastor Toki went on to glory at about 2 a.m. And uh, it's, it's always much, much, much tougher for us who are left on earth. It's one of these mysteries, the Bible says, this mystery is very great. But uh, one thing I know is that death is defeated. When our two-year-old daughter died back in the year 2000, God gave me a couple of scriptures and I never really, I never really wanted to hear what he had to say, even though I desperately wanted to hear what he had to say. If you see what I mean, it's like the, it's like the paradox of mourning. And uh, the, the first scripture that he gave us was that the Bible says that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. So when somebody relocates to heaven, they effectively change time zones as well. And being in the presence of God without us for Pastor Toki is like being away from us for 20 minutes because he's passed through that time zone that says with the, de with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and 1,000 years is like a day. So if you divide that by 24 hours and then divide that by the time we've got left on earth, then you're looking at probably about 25, 28 minutes, which is amazing in itself. But we are the ones left behind, and there's sadness, there's mourning. But you know, our mourning, it's not, the, it's not like the way the world mourns. You know, we're sad that he's gone. I'm sad that my son Benji has gone to Canada. Uh, Benji's relocated to Canada. Tokyo's relocated to heaven. And that's what death is like for us who believe. It's really, really important to keep that perspective. Because the Bible says we don't mourn as the world mourns. We don't weep like the world weeps. We mourn and we weep a different way because of what we know from Scripture. When somebody is in a, a state, when they're in a condition where they have been fighting and fighting for their health, and for some reason they've, they've just been unable to make that contact with their healing, then what happens is towards the end of that process, usually people grasp glimpses of what heaven is like. The pain and the suffering gets so great down here on earth that heaven, for those who are suffering, is like a holiday. And so, if you want a God-based analogy of what things are like for Pastor Toki, he's on holiday for about 25 minutes without us, and we're catching up. That's what the Bible says. Sure, there's a body to bury, there is a funeral to conduct, and obviously we'll keep everyone informed about that situation. But after that, there is a new beginning to embrace. Many, many times, new beginnings come in the disguise of painful endings. And one of the hardest things to declare in the midst of such a season of mourning and weeping and sorrowing, one of the hardest things to declare is a new season. That's the very thing that God told me to share this morning. I didn't know 
that Pastor Toki was going to go on to glory last night. I, I felt in my spirit that something would have happened by the 4th of May, either by uh, healing or by passing on to glory. And uh, that was my, my prayer. I, 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 pray, I was praying for him last night. In fact, I texted Sister Ibi and I just said, you know, we're praying for you, we're praying for Tote, we're praying for the whole family. And um, this is the outcome this morning that our beloved friend, our brother, I always felt such a sense of God's assurance around him. It was remarkable to, uh, for him to be able to carry that anointing. It was remarkable. And uh, I remember when we went on various mission trips. I remember that mission trip to Kenya that he and I took. I remember the look on his face of sheer terror when we uh, sat on that eight-seater airplane. Thank you and took off into the Maasai lands of Kenya in basically what was uh, an aluminium-framed paper mache aeroplane with a big engine at the front and a pilot that didn't know what time of day it was. Uh, that, was that was a hairy ride. And uh, thank God, he, he, he carries those testimonies to heaven. It's amazing what you can't bring to heaven. You can't bring the cars. You can't bring the bling. You can't bring the watches. You, you bring the testimony of your life, and you bring those that you led to Jesus. That's it. Here I am, and here are those whom you gave me. And so I want us to declare a season of evangelism in Pastor Toki's memory. I want us to declare a season of favor because of what we've been through as a nation through this lockdown. Uh, I thank God for Sundays. I get to see some of my brothers and sisters here uh, in, in the auditorium as we conduct the service for you watching at home, etc., and at your places of work. And uh, it's been a very, very tough journey for me. And I feel so pampered when I look at what some of the nations have been suffering. I saw a two and a half, three mile queue for food in an area that uh, uh, Kamal and Junior and myself ministered in, in Pretoria a, a, a few years ago. We walked, in fact, drove down that street. There's a two and a half, three mile queue just for food in Pretoria, South Africa. And how easily and how lightly we've, we've had it here. I thank God for the testimony that God gave us at the very outset that we will take a census and none of us will have been taken by that dreadful virus. And I thank God for the days and months and weeks ahead that we're planning into those already. I'll let you into a little secret. Uh, we've done the bookshop and the cafe, as some of you may have seen on WhatsApp. I sent out a little video. If you haven't seen it, just to ask your cell leader to send it to you. Uh, but we're doing the foyer as well, the entrance area, and uh, we're getting that all done up brand new as well, brand spanking new for when we reopen. We had our first meeting of the end of lockdown team as well on, uh, what was that, Friday at 8 o'clock. We have mapped out how we can turn the LTC here in Wembley into a massive one-way system. We're going to try it out with essential teams first on the first Sunday and then see how it goes. So watch this space for the reopening very soon of what will be, for the first while, a socially distanced Harvest Church London in Wembley. But I know that God is looking after us. He's watching over us even in these desperate times. Hallelujah to Jesus. We've been believing God since uh, Saturday the 14th of March that the Lord would uh, give us something special on the 8th of May. I felt in my spirit that around the 8th of May, God is going to give this nation some sort of blessing, some sort of, uh, I don't know what it is, some sort of government 
declaration or whatever it is. I don't care what it is, but Lord, just bring it on in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, we need some good news at this time. The Bible says, show me a sign for good that it will silence my enemies. And that's what I want us to see in this season. If you have your Bible with you, would you turn with me to the 28th chapter of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 28, and we are going to read from verse number 23, Isaiah 28, 23. God gave me this scripture, and he said, there's something in it for you. There's something in it for your people. There's something in it for um, the, the, the teams that are in the house. There's something in it for the mighty ones. There is something in it from the least to the greatest in harvest. And I want to share it with you, but I want to then unwrap it because it's one of those things that like at the outset, it's like, well, Lord, what are you talking about here? You start with a command that says, give ear and hear my voice. And then you end it by saying, this also comes from the Lord of hosts. That's the God of armies. So that's the God who's not mucking around. Whenever you see the Lord called the Lord of hosts in scripture, it's a serious thing. It's a, the, the, the Lord of hosts is his military title. So, for instance, Prince Charles is Prince Charles, HRH Prince Charles, but he's also the head of the paratroop regiment. I believe it's the paratroop, or is it the Marines? One of them, anyway. But when he comes out in his military thing, he is a military man, and he is HRH, the Prince of Wales, uh, the, the head of the paratroop regiment. And so it is with God. God has different names. God has the name El Elyon, which is the God who is over all other gods, the one who's seen and declared the end from the beginning. Then there is El Shaddai, the breasty one, the comforter, the one who wraps his arms around you and gives you that tender, tender love that most of us in the natural experience from our mothers. That's El Shaddai. Then he has the, this name, the Lord of hosts, the captain of the armies, the one with the big sword in his hand who's coming after the enemy for vengeance. And look at what he says here in Isaiah 28, verse number 23. Give ear and hear my voice. Listen and hear my words. And then he starts talking about farming. And it's like, well, Lord, okay, like, chill. What, what is this about? I don't, I don't quite get what you're trying to get through to me. But I want to unwrap it at the end and we'll see. He says, does the farmer plow continually to plant seed? Does he continually turn and harrow the ground? Does he not level its surface and sow dill and scatter cumin and plant wheat in rows, barley in its place and rye within its area? For his God instructs and teaches him properly. For dill is not threshed with a thresh threshing sledge nor is the cartwheel driven over cumin. But dill is beaten out with a rod and cumin with a club. Great. Well, what does that mean? Grain for bread is crushed. Indeed, he does not continue to thresh it forever because the wheel of his cart and of his horses continually damage it. He does not thresh it longer. And then he says, this also comes from the Lord of hosts, who has made his counsel wonderful and his wisdom great. Well, like, cheers, God. Like, what are you talking about? I'm not a farmer. I don't really care. You know, if I want cumin or dill, I can go down to Tesco's. Um, I, I don't need wheat unless it's flour I need, et cetera, et cetera, uh, or bread. Then, then what are you talking about? When I studied out this scripture, God started to speak to me about the things in his word that he calls seed. Because all the things that he mentions are the fruit of the earth, but they are also seeds. And our seed life is really important. You see, when we see our lives as a seed, we, got, we can call on God to sow that seed into whatever people, whatever land, whatever nation, whatever people group he desires to sow it into. Now, let me give an example. 
or in fact, let me give you six things that are classed as seed in Scripture. Number one, your life. Your life is a seed. Sow it well. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it falls down into the earth and dies, it bears much fruit. Now, you think about this. Our dear beloved Pastor Toki went to the Lord last night. But look at the fruit of the life that he sowed into you and I as individuals. Look at the apostolic grace on his life to come. I know we went to uh, Romania. We did a youth encounter, Toke, myself, um, Auntie Ruth, Hayat. Uh, we went over there into the mountains of Transylvania in some nine-seater Volkswagen through mountainous terrain with all kinds of drivers that thought they were like Formula One drivers. It was a crazy, crazy, risky time. And he, he came and, and just preached marvelously concerning the destiny of the nation of Romania. He then went with me to the Mara lands, to the Maasai lands, which was uh, just a wacky adventure. We saw some great healings there, some great miracles. The teaching ministry, Pastor Togi had that mix of the teaching ministry and the apostolic ministry. He was at home and comfortable everywhere. In fact, when we caught that flight back from Nairobi, Kenya, it was so funny because the guys in, um, you know, you cross UK immigration before you get on the plane from certain nations. And uh, Nairobi, Kenya is one of those. So we went to the immigration desk to be interviewed. For me, it was fine. They could see my Muzungu, etc. And I just, you know, I handed them my passport and... Uh, you know, went through, and they took one look at Toki, and they started speaking Swahili to him. And uh, he starts saying, what, what, what? No, I'm, I'm British, I'm British. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. And handing him the, the passport with his... his th and, of course, then, you know, it was quite a warm situation in the airport. It was about half past 10, 11 at night, and uh, he started sweating. And then he started sweating profusely. I'm British, you know. And uh, just, I mean, the, the, most, the most hilarious situation. I said to him afterwards, I said, wow, Toke. I said, thank God you weren't a criminal. I said, you may have folded under questioning. And uh, it was, it was such, such a great time. But you see, he goes with the fruit of those testimonies. When the Lord says, who went to the nations in my name? Who said, here I am, send me? Then he can stand and he can salute the Lord of hosts, and say, yes, my life was that seed. Hallelujah to Jesus. What a great testimony. You see, I want you to follow him like he followed Christ. I want you to say yes to Jesus, yes to the nations, yes, I will go. There's something about the go of the gospel. The gospel is the gospel. God, two-thirds of God's name is go. So let's go in Jesus' mighty name. I want to go to China, praise the living Jesus. I want people brave enough to spend 15 years in prison as well with me. So I don't want any kind of like pampered people. Do you remember that pampered paratrooper and pastored? I was going to say something else, beginning with P. We'll move on. Praise God. Your life is a seed. Your children are your seed. Praise the living God forever. My children are my seed. The Bible says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. The seed of the righteous is blessed. Bolu, Deborah, Esther, we salute you. We hold you in our arms of love. We salute you in the name of Jesus. We stand with you at this time. You see, I know it's well. I went to heaven in a vision in 1987, about September. In fact, my cousin Nick was in the very same prayer meeting where I had that encounter with God. And I've seen heaven. I know what heaven's like. As I came back down to earth, I saw the future for the area that I was actually in at that particular time. And that's what happens when you pass through the heavens. It's like future ages to come are there in the heavenlies. It's very difficult to explain, but anyway, that's what it is. 
And so coming back into earth, I knew, wow, I said, God, this is, this is too much. When people get glimpses of heaven, staying here on earth is just kind of, you know, whatever. Let me fulfill my destiny. destiny. Let me do my, let, let me get my life as a seed. And then when you put my carcass in the ground and I'm off to heaven, then praise the living God forever. That's what counts. Our children are our seed. The word of God is a seed. Jesus said, the sower sows the word. That's exactly what I'm doing into your life and into your heart today. I want to ask a question. Whose life will you sow the word of God into? That's really, really important to see in seeing your life as a seed. Hallelujah to Jesus. The next one is your money. Your money is a seed. Treat your money like a seed. Treat it like the way that God says. He says, you know, the, the, the way that you treat a cumin seed and the way that you treat a, uh, uh, um, a dill seed or the way that you treat a wheat seed, etc., you have a pattern you have a process. He says the farmer doesn't plow continually so that he can plant seed. When that land is well plowed, he levels it off and then he scatters the seed on that ground. And that has to be the way that we treat our finances. We treat our finances deliberately. We sow them deliberately. We don't partake in anything that can pollute our financial pool. It's really important to keep the pool of your finances clean. It's very important to keep it um, clean from the love of money and from uh, all sorts of, you know, other... I mean, God knows what's out there that can pollute us. So it's very, very important that we understand the purpose and the power of our money in our finances. The next thing is our faith. My faith is a seed I sow it deliberately. Where God says, I want you to believe me for this. I want you to believe me for that. I want you to believe me for the other. I sow my faith into that thing. I declare deliberately into those things that God shows me to sow his word and my declarations in. So it's really important that we use our faith like that. Use your faith like a tool. Use your faith like a weapon. In this situation now, concerning the, the passing of our dear Pastor Toki, sow your faith into the future of Sister Ibi, Bolu, Deborah, and Esther. Sow your faith deliberately. Speak words over their lives. Sow something financial into their lives. Why not? Sow the word of God. It is well with my soul in the mighty name of Jesus. Weeping may endure for a night. So there's an inbuilt endurance to weeping. But joy comes in the morning. Really, really important to understand that. Start to declare joy. Start to declare a new season. Start to declare a new beginning. And lastly, the other, th the, the sixth thing that you can uh, see in the word of God as a seed is your words. So I'll run through them again. Your life, your children, the word of God, your money, your faith, and the last thing, your words. I will speak and declare the goodness of God. I will live to declare his goodness. We need in this season we need to use our words according and in line with the Spirit of God, according to and in line with the person of the Holy Spirit. On uh, the 1st of May, gosh, what day was that? Was that uh, Friday? Friday the 1st of May. I woke up I, and the first thing I did was I, I uh, pinged out a message to our frontliners. We've got um, 32, I think it is, people from Harvest working on the front line. That's doctors, nurses, uh, medical couriers, pharmacists, healthcare workers, hospital cleaners, uh, people who are working generally in domestics. I, I don't know how many volunteers. We haven't even counted the number of people who signed up for the uh, Good Samaritan volunteer service for the NHS. But I know it was all hands to the pump. But on Friday the 1st of May, I woke up about uh, 
six, no, no, it's the 30th of April. That's right, it's the day after my birthday. I woke up about 6 a.m. and I had all sorts of ideas in my head in, in terms of like, I felt like God had just dumped from heaven into my life. And I woke up, I said, wow, I've got to get together and, and get a team ready to open up the LTC at the end of everything. Uh, I said, we've got to create, turn that LTC into one big one-way system. I've got to work out who that we can have in first and just so that we can maintain social distancing, but basically test run everything. And you'll hear about some of that in the weeks to come. And then um, I started to pray about the whole seasonal thing. God said, he said, the new season that you've been believing me for, he said, start to declare it now. Start to declare that my light is rising like the dawn. So Friday morning, I pinged out to our essential workers, our frontliners on the WhatsApp group. And I just said, guys, I said, the Lord woke me up this morning and he's told me to declare a new season. Now, what I hadn't told them was that when I stood on the platform here on Saturday, the 14th of March, standing in for Jerry Seville at our conference, I was praying in my spirit as the Lord was showing me the, the, the stuff about the 8th of May, I was praying in my spirit and I was saying, but Lord, I said, let me declare a new season. Let me declare a new season. And it was like trying to push up. I don't know if you've ever been stuck under a drain or you've ever been trying to push up a drain uh, that's, been, that's on top of you for some reason or you're trying to pull it up from the ground. Imagine if you were under that that drain cover that you're trying to push up. And usually, because of the size of the thing, because of the weight of the thing, you lift the thing and it's so heavy, and chances are you put it down again. And then you try and lift again, put it down again, and then you call for help, and then your mates come and lift that lid. I was in the spirit on the 14th of March, and I was saying to God, I was saying, Lord, I said, at least, please, Lord, at least let me declare a new season. Let me declare a new season over my church, over my people, over Britain. Oh, I don't know the way God deals with us so marvelously concerning the United Kingdom and its destiny in this house. I think it's because we're a praying house. We're a sacrificing house. We're a sowing house. We know how to draw heaven's attention by these things like praises in the midst of adversity. In the midst of adversity, we'll praise you, Jesus, forever. And uh, so there, there was, there's something about it. So I'm saying to God, I'm saying, Lord, let me declare a new season. He said, no. He said, the time isn't yet. He said, keep, keep a lid on it, so to speak. And Friday, when I woke up, when I sent that text, I think it was the 30th of April, the, the, the 1st of May, one of those dates. Uh, it's in my WhatsApp group. Maybe someone can tell me online. Um, when I sent that, that message, it was because... God had said, now, go, do it now. And as I did it right then, I just felt the slightest chink of light. There's a song that we used to sing. It's called, uh, Your Light is Rising Like the Dawn. And if you've ever seen the dawn rise, you know, it's like the sky and the atmosphere around the sky changes because it knows the sun is coming. And then suddenly... The first sunlight appears. Well, what I saw in the spirit when, when I woke up that day at six o'clock, literally, it was, like, it was like the first thing. Now declare it. Now declare it early. There's something about rising up early in the morning under the leadership and the guidance of the Lord. The Bible says so many times, now Abraham rose up in the morning and, and Moses rose up early in the morning. There's something about the wakey up that God does, and he releases things at that particular time. And I want to declare to you, my brother and sister, this is our new season. This is our new season. I want you to grasp that word. So, oh, Pastor P, you know, it's a, you're declaring a new beginning, and, you know, it's like, well, uh, we've just suffered the, the loss of our associate pastor. Firstly, you know, really, he's not lost. He's in heaven. We know where he is. Thank God. Right? But secondly, new beginnings are often disguised as painful endings. And this is a painful time 
It's a raw time to even say such a thing. But I know, my brother and sister, that this is the season. This is the season. This is God's season for us. We must declare it. We must call it in. We must lean upon the name of the Lord. Thank you, beloved Jesus, for this new season. In the midst of this adversity, in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this discomfort, we stand and declare by faith, this is our new season. In Jesus' mighty name. Would you stand to your feet? I want us to, to, to pray and to declare that thing right now. For some, it's going to, do you know how painful it is even standing here? I don't know what it's like for the family. But one thing I do know is that the God of new beginnings is going to visit them. He's going to visit us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit. If you're at home, please stand. If it's safe, you're not driving or anything, uh, then please stand as well. I want to lead you in a declaration. Just lift a hand to heaven as long as it's safe. Close your eyes and declare. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, whose I am and whom I serve, I declare that today is a new beginning. I declare that this new season is upon us. That the song of the turtle dove shall be heard again. That the voice of joy shall be heard again. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We declare this new season we declare a new season for every family in harvest, for every individual in harvest. And we declare an overflow of that new season to this nation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord thanks and praise for his goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for your word. And Lord God, we take your word. And we thank you, Lord, that you know best, that you are in control, and that our lives are in your hands. And Father, we will be obedient to your word. We will be those who are doers and not just hearers of your word. So Lord God, we will sow every seed that you've called us to sow into this new season. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.